Welcome to this final edition of the journey for this week. You know, one of the most important dispositions we need to cultivate in this time of lockdown, it seems to me, is self-compassion. To be compassionate is to show kindness, to be caring, to be understanding and willing to help. And this is a word for a very positive emotion that has to do with being thoughtful and charitable and sensitive. We have all had experiences of giving or receiving compassion to and from one another. We are programmed to think that compassion is about a way of relating to others. If you ask about compassion, we almost almost immediately begin to think of the how of being compassionate to others. It could be and should be a disposition through which we act towards another. But there is also a time in which we need to be aware of and cultivate self-compassion. You see, self-compassion is extending compassion to oneself in instances of perceived inadequacy or failure or anxiety or general suffering. We can often put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And this is often compounded by circumstances. This lockdown will certainly amplify our own fragility and sense of anxiety, maybe even our sense of inadequacy. As the economy slowly slows down and even worsens, and we cannot even provide for others or ourselves as we used to, we run the risk and even the danger of turning in on ourselves. If only I had done this. If only I had done that. We may be kind and caring and understanding with others, but we can be brutal with ourselves for not doing or achieving what we think we should have or we should be. Ever had the experience of mercilessly judging and criticizing yourself for various inadequacies or shortcomings or even failings? Self-compassion means you are kind and understanding when confronted with personal inadequacies and failings. You know, we live with this idea that we are supposed to be perfect, an idea that is an obstacle to many of us becoming who we really are, because we always trying to be what we think we should be and not who we are. And this leads us to feeling very churned up, angry or even upset with ourselves. But just a little note, we must be careful that we don't confuse self-compassion with self-pity or self-indulgence. Those are not healthy either. In times of fear and stress and anxiety, we need to show ourselves the same compassion we would to others who are feeling the same. In actual fact, we are probably better at being compassionate to others when we are compassionate first with ourselves. You know, friends, research shows that when we learn self-compassion, we experience greater emotional equanimity. It helps us recognize that personal suffering and inadequacy is a shared human experience, something we all go through, rather than something that just happens to me. I am not alone. This in turn makes us more compassionate with others. Self-compassion also requires that we balance our negative emotions so that feelings are neither suppressed nor exaggerated. This helps us 
keep some equilibrium as well. Self-compassion invites us to observe our negative thoughts and emotions with openness and clarity. We are not judgmental, but simply receptive. And we observe thoughts and feelings as they are without trying to suppress or deny any of them. You know, we cannot ignore our pain and feel compassion for it at the same time. We cannot ignore our suffering and expect to be compassionate to others. And so I want to invite you today to call to mind one personal inadequacy or failing. And can you allow yourself to let go of judging or criticizing yourself and just simply be compassionate. See yourself through the eyes of compassion.